Hello, everyone, and welcome to the YouTube channel that goes by Brett Norman and MK2009, was it, Michael? 2007 was the first year ah, that I approached on YouTube. Ah, 2007. I was off by two years. Shame on me. But yeah, it's uh, Sabbath, the 14th of October, Michael. And uh, this is a another session with Bruce Lee, which has come back from the dead because <laughs> we thought we were done with him. But hey... He's been resurrected. Yeah, and, he's just uh, it's just an extension, you see, that history is an illusion part two, what you would like to say. Yeah. So you see that I yeah. think there are cer certain things that have not been told yet and uh, are worth of being looked into so that you know, maybe that we all know how the world is ticking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's hear it, Michael. Let's get in. I would never have expected when I went into that subject that it would uh, draw some conclusions on that uh, huge scale mm. with Kennedy and all the stuff. Oh, but, yeah. But I'm very thankful that uh, we had the opportunity that uh, also Brett had the continuity and the patience with me to go in all that 30 plus sessions so that we can now look at it from a bird's eye view almost. That we see that we all have been set up. Yeah. We all have been set up. This is just no coincidence that the Asian market has got their own idol and it was just uh, right on time. So, uh, and like uh, just in time. So when the Vietnam War was uh, on the decline, they just have uh, published and uh, promoted a Chinese uh, Hong Kong legend. And so that 80 years after his birth in 1940 and 2020, when all the peoples had to wear masks, um, so you see that this uh, tram is just uh, as as a propaganda institution is just uh, circling around Hong Kong. Salute to our legend. So what is it about here, the extensions to the almost uh, finished uh, satanic media agenda stuff? History is an illusion too. Well. I thought about something and I was proven right, I think. Uh, so let me just uh, try to share my views. And this is uh, to remind everybody, this is still a biblical channel. But uh, I think that uh, you will be uh, soon see why I was just trying to head into this topic again. So first of all, I have to excuse myself because I should have enlarged these pictures so that you have all a convenient view of the things that uh, I found very interesting. A Bruce Lee themed train runs through Hong Kong's central district on Friday to commemorate Lee's 18th birthday. Three such trams featuring Bruce. So three, like the Trinity, three. Interesting when it is about uh, becoming a legend, yeah, which is also very interesting because uh, today I found uh, it quite revealing that they had made a uh, television series about the legend of Bruce Lee. More than uh, I think it was 30 episodes about uh, the story, but there are so many fictional things in there, and of course, he's been sold as a legend. What is a legend? A legend has been somebody you talk about even when they have deceased. And uh, so that he's been sold as a legend or an idol. So this session has a subtitle. It's called July the 20th. It is by no coincidence, I think, that Bruce Lee died on July the 20th. The first thought I had within the Bruce Lee sessions was that it is in uh, the European format. It's the 20th of the seven months, which is 2007 means 007 has something to do with James Bond, of course. So the origins of James Bond is according to legend, legend has it, rumor has it, that it was the symbol of the John D, mathematician, astrologer, a counselor of the queen and uh, alchemist, that he was when he was communicating with the Queen Elizabeth that he was just using uh, this uh, symbol as a means to uh, his own signature and the circle should be symbolizing the private eyes if you don't believe it just try and uh, contact Daryl Hall and John Oates 
And this 007 is also a form of the James Bond 007 logo when the 7 has been seen here as uh, some part of a pistol actually. So that is the usual explanation of it. But of course nobody knows if that is correct. So therefore I went into an interesting website this week and it's called literary007.com. Nobody knows anything. So that's a problem with symbols that uh, they get away with everything because uh, every explanation could be the right one. But usually I go for the oldest one because that is most likely the correct one because it's just like with uh, any other things that any new edition of anything will spoil anything. So that was the explanation of the John D. symbol. And John D. has set up the Secret Service together with Francis Walsingham. And so they're coming up with different explanations of the 007 uh, myth or 007 symbolism. Um, there is also rumors that uh, these, um, beside John D., that uh, Ian Fleming, the author and Secret Service agent on himself, became the international that 007 became the international dialing code for Russia <laughs> and uh, the zip code of a section of Washington DC. And others have speculated that Ian Fleming's hotel room number, which was 1007, but the one had worn off. So everybody comes with their explanation. So you can go endlessly on all this stuff. But uh, one of the oldest explanations is then the John D. scientist, astrologer and magician, alchemist John D. and his uh, medium, Mr. Carey, and all the stuff which they don't want you to tell. Most likely that he was just a, a sorcerer and he had a kind of a cryptic language, cryptic code, which is called the Enochian alphabet. He was trying to get in touch with angels. Where do we know that from, Brad? Uh, the Bible. Mm -hmm. So most likely it is the third of the subjects, which was also the eyes, double O, who, and um, John D, who was signing his letters with her to the queen with two circles guarded by what might have been a square root sign or an elongated seven, it looked like, double O, seven. Mm -hmm. There are other theories as well. There are bus lines, but you see, this is just quite too modern um, to be the origin of the James Bond novels, which were starting in the 1950s, or the James Bond movies, which were starting in the 1960s. So that can't be the original um, cause. What is very interesting in is, is Rudyard Kipling and 007. The British author Rudyard Kipling <laughs> There is a tale about a tank engine that may have been the first appearance of 007 according to several sources, including the James Bond 007 Museum in Sweden. According to the museum's website, Fleming has picked up number 007 from the title, a novel by the famous British writer and Nobel, Nobel laureate Richard Kipling, best known for The Jungle Book. Kipling did write a 6,100 word <coughs> short story called 007, first published in August 1897, issue of Scribner's magazine. The story begins, quote, a locomotive is next to a marine engine, the most sensitive thing man ever made and number 007 besides being sensitive was new. The red paint was hardly dry on his spotless bumper bar, his headlights shone like a fireman's helmet. So this is the issues of Scribner's magazine of the short tale of Rudyard Kipling 007. Mm -hmm. And there is also Duke of Marlborough Mar and uh, all the stuff, but let's go back to the script. This is Rudyard Kipling, 1897. So that is close 60 years uh, before the novels were been pinned down by Ian Fleming. So let's hear it about Rudyard Kipling. He was a British propaganda writer and Secret Service agent himself. Theosophical Society MI6, used in the great game between Russia and the British Empire and the pedophilia agency of the Boy Scouts of America. He was first... Agenda. Pedophilia agenda. Thank you. Michael. What, what did I... How did I pronounce it? I can't remember. Okay. Um, it's okay. 
It's okay. Okay. He was first cousin of British <laughs> Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. You see, these are not the usual guys. Yeah, he's a propaganda writer. He's a secret service agent. And he is a first cousin of a British Prime Minister. So every yes. time you come across somebody of importance, it, it is no newbie. Mm -hmm. His father, John Lookwood Kipling, worked for the Victoria and Albert Museum, Saxe Coburgs, and worked with Robert Bolvar Lutton in India. He worked for newspaper, the pioneer of theosophist Alfred Sinnett, once again. In 1889, he visited San Francisco, the birth town of Bruce Lee, allegedly, and lived at London in Villa Street. Rudyard Kipling was a member of the Ateneum Club. <laughs> You know, that's the same where, uh, yeah, you see it now. With Humphrey Dawn, Prime Minister Henry Temple and A.C. Doyle. You know who A.C. Doyle is? A.C. Doyle is Arthur Conan Doyle. That's the father, so-called writer, of Sherlock Holmes. And A.C. Doyle was also a member of the Order of the Golden Dawn, which, of course, brings him in the same company as Alistair Crowley and the like. So it's always the same. Lewis Carroll, Charles Darwin, you see, you see that this is just a bunch of secret service society people. Benjamin Disraeli, yeah, you, you see all these high ranking politicians, St. John Philby, and later Jimmy Savile, that's the one, the DJ from the United Kingdom, which was accused to have uh, been raped more than 300 or 400 uh, children, and including corpses. Yeah, and he was best friends, of course, with uh, Prince and now King Charles. So therefore, he got away with it. Maybe he was also only a scapegoat. Uh, who knows? Ruja Kipling. In India, Helena Blavatsky of the Theosophical Society has founded a Theosophic community in India. And uh, you see that these theo Theosophists, they all work together, of course. The techniques of uh, these dissociation techniques of yoga were later talked to actors by theosophists in Hollywood, including Jiddha Krishnamurti, and that is the spiritual source, everybody says, of Bruce Lee. Richard Kipling, in 1894, he published the Jungle Book with Indo-Aryan names set in India. Mowgli is the archetype of the noble savage, the fool, the child of Pan, we know the Pan of the Hymto Pan, or the, number, the name of Satan ray, uh, by Aleister Crowley, raised by wolves associated with the god Apollo. Yeah? And this is just the Jungle Book with Mowgli from Rucha Kipling for the children and the adult version of it, in a strange kind of uh, resemblance by name, is Dancing with Wolves with Kevin Costner. So, not going into the Jungle Book now, but I found it very interesting. In 1907, that Richard Kipling, who has been made that novel 007, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. Where do we know that from? Huh? Maybe Bob Dylan? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Kipling worked with British agents Robert Baden Powell and Ernest Thompson Seton, married to theosophist Grace. You see, all the people, all the people are in the same boat. The guy he worked together with, Baden Paul, was also a member of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, Order of the Christ, Order of the Dannebrog, Order of the Phoenix, Order of Orange Nassau, and Order of the Bath. Hello, Peter Gabriel, who lived in Bath. His father was a priest of the Church of England. His wife was related to Winston Churchill. Yes, you see, it's a small club and you're not in it. During the World War I and World War II ritual, this Rucha Kipling Jungle Book, 007 uh, writer, He worked at War Propaganda Office Wellington House <laughs> with Alfred Harmsworth, Fabian H.G. Wells, we know the time machine, Edward Bernays, yeah? Propaganda, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, and the Jesuit A.C. Doyle, which is Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes. It's always the same. It's always the same. Yeah, You see that Jida Krishnamurti has ties to the Theosophical Society, of course, uh, because they wanted to portray him as the new Matreya, the new word teacher. 
where to start? You see that even if I pick a 007 short tale from Richard Kipling, who is the author of Oh, this so nice jungle book, yeah, then I always come to the same people. I come to MI6, I come to Secret Service, I come to Alistair Crowley, I always the same people. It's a small club and we are not in it. My, 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 my. You see, all these theosophical guys, they just want to drive you away from the Bible with their theosophy or their sophistry when it comes down to theology, however you would like to uh, see it. There's also a certain Robert Heinlein who had Laurel Canyon's meeting. Laurel Canyon, remember, where Bruce Lee used to live and where the Shannon Tate murder case allegedly uh, happened. This Laurel Canyon meetings with Jack Parsons, <laughs> who is, of course, OTO America or the founder of uh, JPL, who want to take you to the Mars in, uh, of, of the NASA, and Ron Hubbard of the Church of Scientology. You, you see, it's always the same people around. Yeah, if you're fit into the agenda, you're in the club. If you're not fitting to the agenda, if you're not Luciferian, sat sat satanic stuff, you're not fitting in. Yeah, so that Robert Heinlein, for example, wrote a tale called Stranger in a Strange Land. I am always reminded on Robbie Robertson of the band who died recently. And um, that's an album here where uh, is also the first track. And I had this album. It's called Fallen Angel. It's about Lucifer. And the uh, the refrain, the refrain um, had, has uh, Peter Gabriel in it. Fallen Angel. And this Somewhere Down the Crazy River is... Uh, very, very, very connected uh, to these uh, Robert Heinlein, Stranger in a Strange Land. Everybody knows exactly what they are doing. Get back to the script. <laughs> so, Stranger in a Strange Land with the Christ figure raised by Martians instead of wolves and the wolf is on the tarot card, the moon. Yeah? You see here the wolves who are crying to the moon. Yeah, So, that uh, reminded me of a Norwegian band called Aha with Cry Wolf. So, and this uh, Robert Henlein or Heinlein, this story, set in the Walter Reed Army Hospital of Project Bluebird, which is the same hospital where officially the corpse of your John F. Kennedy has been transported to for examination. Where do you want to start? You see, everybody is here in line with the agenda. And you know who is putting the strings. Everywhere, where you go, you see that the wolf also, who is just howling at the moon and has the ties to the jungle book, Kipling and so, and it's also a symbol here, the Fabian Society also has the wolf in sheep's clothing logo. Mm -hmm. And we know the wolf from the sheep clothing in, uh, in the Bible, I think. Ah, there it is, Matthew 7.15. Would you care to to read that? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Mm -hmm. And it continues, you yeah. shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Ah. So no wonder you don't have to explain that symbol when you know the Bible. Right? <laughs> right. You have That's to know your Bible. Yes, you do. And I think that this verse of Matthew, I, I think it's quite common and it will not be um, forged also on Catholic Bibles. I think that's quite clear. I think that is in, even in Germany, I do not know if it is the case in the United States, uh, even in Germany, it is just a saying here that nobody draws the connection to the Bible, but uh, it's just a saying here, wolf in sheep's clothing. So. Well, nobody except for the meek, because the meek will inherit the earth. That means the people that are 
are God's people that are attentive and are Bereans that read their Bible, Michael. There are people that do. Not many, but Not there many. are. Mm. There are. You can't say there isn't. Mm. That'd be wrong. Yeah. There is a remnant. One of the Fabian Society also um, is interesting because I have looked it up here. The Fabian Society, there are pamphlets and books. Uh, Liberta, Liberty, the Fabian Society, Executive. Yeah, and look, what's the first name here? Annie Besant. Yeah. Then you are together with the Theosophical Society and Annie Besant used to be the protege of Jida Krishnamurti as the world teacher, the Maitreya. And this is the spiritual source, one of the main spiritual sources of Bruce Lee as well. And other peoples as well. You see that George Bernard Shaw, who was the one who was just uh, proclaiming it would be good to have some gas uh, to get rid uh, of uh, some unpleasant people, uh, that he wanted to kill uh, a number of people who were not, just, in his eyes, worth of living. Yeah. So you can imagine what kind of people there are. You see that these people there, they think they are gods because they want to decide who to who can live and who has to go. Well, Michael, if you look at the symbolism above here, it's pretty obvious. What mm -hmm. are they wearing? Jacobean hats. Mm -hmm. And they're also, uh, you know, showing themselves to be uh, the same uh, orientation as the uh, document that was put out after the French Revolution. Yeah, that's what I wanted to tell. Liberty, equality and fraternity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, that was, so but, but that would be the next step right there, right yeah. in your face. Yeah, disguised yeah. as they're, humanism they're or disguised as absolutely. theosophy. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, exactly. And I think that is also no coincidence that she has some big wings here on her back. So yeah, Come so on. Colossians two verse eight, right? Yeah, yeah. Where so. lest any man spoil you through philosophy, through vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one member of the famous society is a big protege of a very famous English band of the nineteen eighties. The name is Dave Gann, oh, and the group gee. is Deepesh Mode. That's also a project of Fabian Society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have looked it up because you have asked me lately uh, how old he was, and I think it was he was close to 18 or 19 years old when he lied in that coffin. You see that when you start your career on that uh, background, what do you expect where you end? Mm -hmm. Come on, your career starts in a coffin. What do you expect? If you don't obey, you end in a coffin sooner as you like. And there's also something else. Yeah, you see, this is some decades later with drug abuse. Do these people look happy? They're just only in for the money, huh? But we were just on, on Richard Kipling, and uh, so let's just uh, switch. Wow, from... he he bears a striking resemblance to uh, uh, Bono from U2. Mm. Looks a lot like him. Yeah. You shall know them by their fruits, huh? Hmm. Okay, so, but we were at the 20th of July. That is the official date of death of Bruce Lee. So, what is it with this date, which is really interesting and fascinating? Because uh, 20th of July is not only 2007 in the European date format, but uh, when Ian Fleming, so the author of James Bond, has been asked, He replied, well, though it was purely a fictional device to make Bond's particular job more interesting, the double O prefix is not so entirely invented as all that. I pinched the idea from the fact that in the Admiralty, at the beginning of the war, all top secret signals had the double O prefix. This was changed subsequently for the usual security reasons, but in stuck 
with in my mind and I borrowed it for Bond and he got stuck with it. Yeah, but once again, I am convinced that it's always the original meaning. And the original meaning for the Secret Service is not the First World War. The original meaning, or the second, the original meaning would be then centuries before John D. And if you would like to go to symbolism with 2007, then you can also say that it has, or with 007 actually, it has to do with seven, the number of gods, so that you can play God. Because uh, 007 means it's a double O agent. He has the license to kill. So who has the license to kill is the one who gives life, right? I guess. Yeah. So somebody who is in a secret service has the right to kill without being sued. And that's also not far-fetched. This is not fiction. Because if you are, well, if you would be a real secret agent by any government, you would not be sued by any legal court. Because you are working undercover. You are protected by the state. You are protected by your protégés. You are protected by the hierarchical system. So you won't be sued. You can get away with anything. Because you are working behind the lines. You are working secretly undercover. So no parliament will uncover that. Because it's not just part of their authority. So these secret service agencies, they are just working on top of the state, actually. That's, I think, what many, many people... I think that the majority of people will underestimate that. The power of secret societies and secret services. They will ah, not. yeah, I agree with that, Michael, especially when you say secret societies, because you see, there are things that you can talk about and there are things you cannot talk about publicly. And if you do talk about them publicly, you put everything on the line and therefore you make life very difficult for all of your comrades or whatever you want to call them the mm. whole gang of them mm. so yeah it's interesting you know you bring up this article about you know the news news agency and then the uh the the secret news <laughs> so it only makes sense doesn't it yeah and you see that license to kill is, is even a fictional story of uh, james bond a license to kill always when you are approached with license to kill you see james bond with a gun because he's licensed to kill. Licensed to kill. Yeah. But that is that was just my first initial thought about the 20th of July. There's much more to it because we are on page 12 from, from 40. 20th of July. Oh. This is an old picture of the 20th of July. Not 1973, but 1944. And of course, if you're not familiar with German history, you won't make anything out of it and you see, say that it's just a picture in the wall. No, it isn't. This is a picture of high-ranking officials of the German Reich in the Second World War. Mr. Berman, <laughs> who is, has Jesuitical ties, if I remember correctly, his son is a Jesuitical uh, priest, Hermann Göring, which is the chief of the Air Force, and Bruno Lörzer surveying the damaged conference room. So what did happen on the 20th of July? The 20th of July was a failed attempt to assassinate the German dictator Adolf Hitler, who was not a German dictator, but an Austrian dictator. And Austria and Germany, they have the same language and subsequently overthrow the Nazi regime on the 20th of July 1944. That was close after the Allied forces have landed on the Normandy in France on the 6th of June 1944. Why? Ah, oh, it's so obvious. D-Day. Come on, where is, where is English when you need it? <laughs> D-Day in English. So the D-Day is a day when the combat 
attack or operation is to be initiated. The best known D-Day is during World War II on June 6, 1944, the day of the Normandy landings initiating the Western Allied effort to liberate Western Europe from Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So they tell you that it started at 6.30 in the morning. My informations are that it started at 6 o'clock in the morning, but that uh, makes no much difference. Because then you see it started on the 6th of June at 6. Yes. Correct. That was then on the 20th of July. That was uh, close to six weeks later after Germany had uh, a problem with several fronts in the west and in the east. And uh, they were about to lose the war, obviously. So somebody officially says that there was an attempt to assassinate the German dictator Adolf Hitler uh, to end the war. Hmm? So that is 20th of July 1944. But there are more and more and more interesting stuff happening when the 20th of July. So let's look it up what happened in the history. On the 20th of July in the age 70 after Christ was the siege of Jerusalem. Titus, the son of the Emperor Vespasian, storms the fortress of Antonia north of the Temple Mount. The Roman army is drawn into street fights with the Zealots. Interesting, huh? Happened on the 20th of July, they tell us. Of course, I can't prove it. But interesting, nevertheless. 70, Siege of Jerusalem, I think that is of much significance, even of biblical significance, I'd say. Yes, I agree. Uh, so there are many, many other things happening. Of course, you have the chance of 1 to 365.25 when it comes to uh, pick a day of the year. But uh, nevertheless, interesting. Some things I found I have highlighted here. In 1903, the Ford Motor Company ships its first automobile. We know that Ford, Henry Ford, has been granted to be a 33-degree Freemason. We have talked about that in the sessions of Bruce Lee, for example. Then there was a war, a Corfu declaration in the First World War. And then it has something to do with Germany again. In 1933... Franz von Papen, who was the second man behind Adolf Hitler, and Cardinal Secretary of State Eugenio Pacelli signed the Imperial Concordat between the Holy See and the German Reich. <laughs> Which is very interesting, because when you know that six weeks later, close to the outbreak of the Second World War, this Cardinal Secretary of State Eugenio Pacelli went on to become Pope. And when you know that that Franz von Papen here on the left side, that guy was sovereign military knight of Malta. And <laughs> when you know that that guy here, which is Ludwig Kahrs, which is the leader of a German party um, who gave their votes to Adolf Hitler uh, so that he had a de democratical um, jurisdiction so that he, that he was legally uh, a Reich uh, Chancellor. Um, he's a priest too, and after after Hitler rose to power, um, he was working in the Vatican as well. So that was a totally Vatican plot, the concordat between the Holy See and the German Reich, which is not the thing that they claim it would be. So that is actually the takeover of the Vatican of Germany. You see, the Vatican has only the authority, sees himself as the only authority, and the Pope himself sees him as infallible since 1870, Brett, can it be? 1870? Yes. First Vatican, Vatican Council. Actually, December of, of 1869, technically, okay. it's when it started, but mm -hmm. I don't know the day they declared the Pope infallible. I don't know the day, so... Mm -hmm. You would have to really know your Catholic history. <laughs> so when they sign an imperial concordat and the Pope sees himself as the emperor and uh, Rome has the golden key flag uh, above uh, or on top of the silver key, so it's absolutely clear that this state then belongs to the Vatican. 
It has nothing to do with only educational purposes or church items or what else. Uh, no, no, or taxes or so. Uh -uh. It has a very, very significant uh, deeper meaning that then the Vatican is ruling the state and uh, also picking the politicians, of course. Yeah, so since 1933, since Hitler rose to power, one of the first things that he did was f close to four months later, um, they were signing the Concordat between the Holy See and the German Reich. Yeah, that is also the reason why Germany is suffering. Hmm? Because money is going out of Germany into foreign projects and uh, uh, everybody is praising the German autobahns. Let me tell you, this is a peep, peep, peep of peep, peep, peep holes out there that uh, many, many Germans have decided then to buy SUVs to get uh, used to the bad roads that actually we have. So um, Netherlands and Poland and all the stuff, they have much better roads than, than we because uh, we are not granted anything from our government. Our government usually is against us. And they are just only puppets from the Vatican. And of course, the Vatican has a much, 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 much bigger problem with Germany uh, than with other countries because Germany is one of the cradles of the Reformation. It was Martin Luther who nailed the 95 Theses according to legend. It was Martin Luther who translated the Bible into German. It was Martin Luther who was the key element that uh, these 30-year uh, war, 1618 to 1648, um, minimized uh, the, the, uh, the lives of German. They lost one-third of the population there in the war mm. between the Protestants and the Catholic and Habsburgs. And so this is of uttermost importance, this. And what really is something that nobody uh, would dare to imagine, but you can look it up, that this Concordat, up to this very day, is still in existence and is valid. So the Federal Republic of Germany has agreed and has... Uh, yeah, not a new one, but uh, this Nazi law, as you would like to say, so this Nazi agreement with the Vatican is still intact. What does that tell you? And then in 1939, a few months before the war break out on uh, September, um, the, this uh, Eugenio Pacelli here, that we went become Pope. <laughs> So if anybody knows Germany in 1939, it is, of course, the Secretary of State and then the Pope, Hitler's Pope, or the man behind Hitler. Let us uh, say how it is. And that happened on the 20th of July, on the same day where they have officially tried to assassinate Adolf Hitler. What a coincidence, huh? What a coincidence. So the Reichskonkordat, the concordat between the Holy See and the German Reich, is a treaty negotiated. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that is incorrect information. You don't negotiate with the Vatican, you obey the Vatican. Between the Vatican and the emergent Nazi Germany, it was signed on the 20th of July 1933 by Cardinal Secretary of State Eugenio Pocelli, who later became Pope Pius XII. On behalf of Pope Pius XI and Vice Chancellor Franz von Papen, nobody tells you that he was the Syrian military knight of Malta. On behalf of President Paul von Hindenburg, who is lesser nobility and the German government. And was ratified on the 10th September 33 and has been in force from that day onward. Can you imagine? Yeah, you should make those letters big. <laughs> <laughs> been in force from that day onward. That's yeah. right, Michael. The treaty guarantees the right of the Catholic Church in Germany. <laughs> Until this very day. And then they tell us about that, oh yeah, everybody who's against the government is a Nazi and all the stuff, when this government is having Nazi laws and Nazi agreements uh, still intact. Yeah, where will you see that? But this would be a study on its own, and I don't want to go into all of the stuff here. But uh, the rise Yeah, from it's, this is what you call a real mess. <laughs> uh, that's a real mess of the Germans, yes. 
Oh, the Austrians, yeah. Yeah, the Rice Concordat is the most controversial of several concordats that the Vatican negotiated during the pontificate of, Ponti of Pius XI. It is frequently discussed in works that deal with the rise of Hitler in the early 1930s and the Holocaust. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, of course, Rome is against the Jews. Rome, it was Rome in 70. Did we talk about that five minutes ago? It was Rome who sent the army to Jerusalem to destroy the temple. Rome was never a friend of Jews. It was Rome who crucified Jesus Christ. It was a Roman soldier with a spear into the side of Jesus Christ on the cross. Yeah, this is, this is such a mess. Yeah, it's a Roman eagle that the Nazis yeah. put up. It's a Roman salute the Nazis do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's all Thanks. turned around. Yeah. Blame it on the Germans, huh? If you say so, then the German Wehrmacht, the German army, is the army of the Pope. Against the Jews, then it makes sense, huh? And of course, we know that the nation state of Israel uh, was uh, one of the main purposes of the Second World War, but nobody would believe it who would not study history in depth. Yeah? What really struck, strikes me is that it is still in force today. And it is not only the only concorded uh, treaty between the Vatican and Germany, um, there were earlier concordates with counties in Germany like Bavaria, I think Bavaria must be the best known county in uh, in foreign states like the United States. So in Bavaria and uh, all this stuff, uh, years and years and years before. Yeah? So there are dozens of concordance in Germany with the Vatican. So these are all the puppets here under a Roman eagle or under European flag, which you can't see here with all the pentagrams. So this is here the Roman salute. <laughs> yeah, or this is the Roman salute. Yeah, and uh, everywhere you go, <laughs> Benito Mussolini, Roman salute, of course. Yeah. And, uh, Yeah, you see that uh, Hitler, uh, Mussolini, had his march towards Rome and he succeeded. It was then uh, the sovereign of Italy who gave the sovereignty to the Vatican in Lateran Treaty in February 1929 with the Lateran Treaty. February 11th, yeah. February 11th, thank you, yeah. I knew that you know the date. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he had made that march towards Rome with the uh, black shirts. And Hitler was in Munich. And Hitler was in Munich because Munich is the Catholic metropole, the Catholic headquarter in Germany. So he was in Munich. And he started also his march, but with his brown shirts, not black shirts. So you see that is, and, and these are two are fascists, yeah. So they serve the fasci, so the sovereignty symbol of the Roman Empire. And uh, you, you see everywhere this this stuff that happened in Germany is just a rip off of the original happening in Italy some ten years before. Yeah, so uh, come on. And this is the Roman salute. Yeah. <laughs> And this is uh, uh, this is the Hitler salute. Sure. <laughs> so much difference in it. Oh, yeah. So gets, let's get back to this nitty gritty. Yeah. So all the kings of the world, they are just actually Muppets or puppets hanging on a string. They seemed to be kings, but they aren't. This is just from a child show, which I saw when I was a few years old. Yeah, Of course, he's <laughs> wearing a golden crown. It's made of a gold. Yeah. So, 20th of July. California opens its first freeway, the Aro Seco Parkway. Interesting, because Aro Seco is the area where uh, this uh, satanic stuff happened with uh, Jack Parsons' OTO, with all this rocket uh, tests and all the stuff. 1944, we talked it uh, over it before. 
uh, World War II, Adolf Hitler survives an assassination attempt led by German army Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg. Von Stauffenberg means nobility. So not a John Doe or Jack Smith or what else? No. So that is also a date. Yeah, so the assassination attempt happened on the same 20th of July as the Concorded. 11 years earlier. Huh? So plus 11. What a coincidence. Yeah, that also a coincidence that Hitler came into power in 33, <laughs> which is, of course, 3 by 11. But there's just a word of coincidences here. Okay, next one is coming up. RFK also, the younger brother of John F. Kennedy, had 11 children. Interesting, he was being killed at the 6th of 6th, yeah, 69. Yeah, so it's like in the case of the Allied landing in the Normandy in 1944, so that 25 years later he was being officially assassinated on the 6th of June, 69, which gives another 666. But we were on the 20th of July, so... 1969, the year when Sharon Tate and all the stuff happened or not happened. Apollo program, Apollo 11, <laughs> Cruz successfully makes the first human landing. This is official Wikipedia. Sorry, I can't help it. Wow, I'm so sorry. I don't want to disinform anybody. So whew, now we got to correct. So this is absolutely disinformation and a lie. Apollo 11's crew successfully makes the first human landing on the moon in the sea of tranquility. Sure. Huh. Americans Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, who had then be a high-ranking 33-degree Freemason, later on 33-degree Freemason, honorary gray, became the first humans to walk on the moon six and a half hours later. Oh, six and a half hours later. So six and a half hours later. Yeah, so huh. six hours and 30 minutes at the same time when the Normandy landing and blah, 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 blah. So it's all disinformation. So when we come down to the 20th of July, there are some certain things happening, but uh, some strange things happening, because we know that the 20th of July 1969, that was just a television broadcast, it was just a show, it was just a movie, it never happened, the way that they tell you. Man, walk on the moon. Yeah. New York Times, you can use it only for your chimney, but it has no relevance and there is no truth in it. Yeah, men walk on the moon on the television claiming to be astronauts. Yeah, that's it. The eagle has landed. Yeah, which eagle? The Roman eagle has landed. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you what. <laughs> they, don't, they, they don't disclose the full story. They only give you the, oh, yes, the eagle has landed. By the way, the eagle has landed, yeah. And, and can you ask somebody, the eagle, you see, that's also a prominent symbol in Freemasonry, of course. Yeah. Or actually, then it is not an eagle, but disguised as a phoenix. Right, right, right. As oh, we have that, learned. The, the uh, burned uh, eagle. Okay, yeah, he's burnt. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Giant steps are what you take walking, walking on the moon. Walking on the boof spoof. Yeah. I hope that my leg won't break. <laughs> Can you imagine? These are all in that stuff. You see that Stuart Copeland, who appears to be drumming on a, on a drum machine, or at least on pads, or at least on a drum kit, or what else. Yeah, He's just using a stick and pretending that that part of the rocket here um, is a, actually a big uh, drum kit. Yeah, So they are doing as if... Like in 1969, the NASA was doing as if, but never happened. Because you see that everything here is a total illusion. Because you don't see any wires, you don't see any amplifiers, you don't see any speaker systems. There is nothing. This is just a movie. It's pretend. It's to pretend, yes. He's pretending to have a drum kit, they are pretending to play guitar, and they are pretending to sing. And the entire thing is just a... It's like karaoke, yeah, and you have just a tape running in the background. It's the same thing that happened in the moon landing show on the 20th of July, 1969. 
Weren't you saying something about Sting where he was, uh, was he some, is he working in some Jesuitical institution or yeah, something? Yeah, he had, he has been working as a teacher in a Jesuitical school and, uh, there's a drama here, Steve, uh, Stuart Copeland, uh, his father was a world-class spy, allegedly, <laughs> And so, therefore, he set up that the founder of the group, the police, and not the frontman Sting, Gordon Sumner, his original name, most likely. But Stuart Copeland set it up, and they set up the group with the name of the police because his father used to work for the secret police. His father was affiliated with the high-class spies like Kim Philby and the alike. So, it's absolutely no coincidence. These are not just the new kids from the block. And this is just not a career from dishwasher to millionaire. That's a, that's a, the thing in it. You see that they, these are just sought out musicians and I say, okay, you do a combo and you can sing about this and you can sing about everything. Little thing she does is magic. You can sing about magic. You can sing about the invisible sun. Yeah, you can sing about uh, don't stand so close to me about pedophilia. Young teacher, the subject of schoolgirls' fantasy. I was a big police fan that uh, long ago. And Walking on the Moon being one of my all-time favorites then. But you see, it's just a distraction because there is nobody walking on the moon. You see that they will claim me as a lunatic. Yeah? But they can't prove it because the rocket science they got and all these moonstones and all the stuff. Yeah, sorry, this is just science so-called. Yeah? Everybody can pick up uh, some stones on the desert and uh, have a filter in front of your camera lenses of it orange yeah? and then pretend to be on Mars. <laughs> and the people buy it. People buy it. You see, this is the same fabrication here. This is also fantasy. Nobody is playing a guitar here. At least you can't hear anything because these are electrical guitars. They don't work unless you are being plugged in together with a big, big amplifier combo or a big speaker system. So the only thing that you would hear is bling. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You would hardly hear anything at all. You would hardly right? hear anything right. at all. Yeah. So that happened when Walking on the Moon allegedly happened on the 20th of July 1969. The exact day when the Germany has this concorded, the exact day when the assassination attempt uh, failed uh, on uh, Adolf Hitler, the exact day when the Roman army marched into Jerusalem and uh, destroyed the temple. In the temple 70 mall. AD, yeah. Yeah. That's a long time ago. Yeah, so what, what does it tell you about all your print and all your media? When you know that the moon landing can't effectively be made because there are so much abnormalities and there are so much physical impossibilities that it can't happen. And um, the channel on Bitute, Space Busters, is doing a great job on that. It can't happen. So it was all just a big show. But as China, as well as Russia, as well as Europe, as well as Australia, nobody complained about it. Then you see, at least, the big benefit you got from the moon landing is that you know that at least since July the 20th, 1969, all your, me sorry, all your media has been controlled. You have to realize it. Otherwise, um, the government of uh, Russia would uh, burst out in NASA and said, oh, these lunat lunatics, they are these Americans, yeah, they don't have absolutely no clue. But you see that the entire world has been controlled long before that, of course. So the moon landing serves to me as the prime example <coughs> that all governments and all media and the entire world has been controlled. And not since uh, 50 years later, since uh, 2019, if you believe it, but since 1969 and before. And as much, 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 much decades before. Not only the Second World War or the First World War, much before that. At least since the 19th century. Why? Because there was a quote 
vom New York Times, äh, Mr. Swan, John Swinton, ja, who said that we are all intellectual prostitutes when it comes down to journalism. And you see that all this New York Times, Honolulu Star Bulletin, they did it and blah, 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 blah. It is just absolutely BS. It is just for the Antichrist world, for the, I do not know, 99% of people who are in the Antichrist spirit, they believe every lie that Satan puts out in front of them. And the children are being stuffed up with lives too by their parents, knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally. Today, I approached a shopping mall and I heard a mother talk to her little child, to her daughter. Uh, oh, if you don't behave, you get nothing from uh, Santa Claus. Yeah, so that is, it, it, it's just a lie. There is no Santa Claus. Yeah, so I, I, I was close to ask to, uh, to draw to that person and I asked her, why do you lie to your children? If I would do that, everybody would think of me as being rude. Because it's common to betray your loved ones. It is common to lie because everybody it's does it. It's tradition, so it, Michael. It's, it's legally. Yeah, if it's everybody tradition. does it, it's legally. They did it. No, they did not anything. They did it. Yeah, they did it. They lied to you. <laughs> That's what they did. <laughs> They did it, yes, but they did what? And then it's the explanation, astronauts safely off moon linked to command ship. Yeah, sure. Freemason Apollo 11. Yep. You see that even if you just would only know the Ten Commandments in the Bible, then you would know that it is an antichrist operation because it is just the first commandment Thou should not have any guards before me. And that operation has been called Apollo 11. <laughs> so how hard mm -hmm. can it be? But you see that uh, also the moon landing show on the July the 20s uh, served also a secondary purpose. Is that just to downplay the incidents of the alleged murder of Marie uh, Kopechny? Um, Senator Kennedy is charged with leaving the scene uh, when it comes down to his uh, terrific car accident, which uh, one of the Robert F. Kennedy's uh, official staff, uh, Mary Jo Kopechny, left her drowning in his car. If you believe that, I'm, I'm, at the moment I'm not believing anything, because I know that everything is controlled information here. Yeah, and then uh, some uh, three weeks later, Sharon Tate uh, ritual t took place, another Freemason Rosicrucian ritual, we know. Not on the July the 20s, because we are just talking about the July the 20s here. So, let's get back. Another group I came across, of course, are the Red Hot Chili Peppers. In that uh, song Californication, Kelly is being the goddess of fornication. Californication, California. It's, uh, it's insult. The name is insult in itself because it's most likely been named after Kali, which is a goddess. So a violation of the first commandment again, which is no surprise then that uh, Californian ex-governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. Um, I think he restricted the use of the Bible or something like that in California. So California is an anti-biblical state or one of the most anti-biblical counties in the United States. And in that song from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, there's a line from California Cation which reads, quote unquote, space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Yeah, it's all a movie, but people think that is information, entertainment or what else. But uh, you see that if uh, Neil Armstrong can't remember seeing any stars and you don't see any stars and there are so many artifacts in that, uh, it's, it's so hilarious uh, that they made so many mistakes, but they got away with that because there is no critical media. And I think that's also the purpose of that uh, Watergate scandal uh, to create the illusion that there is some kind of an independent press. But we know from John Swinton from the 1880s that there is no independent press. So what shall believe me that 90 years later something has improved? When John F. Kennedy's uh, presidency during that in 1963, they have gotten rid of the Lord's Prayer in the school system. 
So everything is going down the drain. So gets back to 1973 then. We are still at the 20th of July. What happened on the 20th of July 1973? It's not hard because of course that is the official date July the 20th 1973 when the world famous martial artist Bruce Lee Junfan, the founder of Jeet Kune Do and for many 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 people uh, the uh, one of the most excellent uh, philosophers of its time and all the stuff out of a sudden deceased on July the 20th the same day of the moon landing the same day of the treaty of the Concordat with Germany, the same day of the assassination attempt of Adolf Hitler, the same day of the Roman invasion or destruction of the temple, the 20th of July. Hmm, interesting. And you can really see that he's been worshipped as an idol. You see that uh, he's praying, obviously, for Bruce Lee, although Bruce Lee was not a Christian, and I I don't uh, uh, have to believe uh, Joey Chen on that, that he was a Christian. There is, for me, there is absolutely no proof that he was a Christian, in my humble opinion. I'm sorry to say that he's a Jesuit in disguise. Yeah, not in disguise above, but in disguise. Yeah, so a Jesuit uh, in, or let me say, a wolf in sheep's clothing spiritually seeing. So that 20th of July 1973, when we did that session, Br um, uh, Brett uh, intervened and said, yeah, the same day as the uh, uh, fake moon landing. And that uh, kept me into thinking because that is four years apart and four being the number of death associated with death in China. And so I thought, okay, 20th of July, uh, that is a very strange day. 2007 and July the 20th, the same day as the moon landing. Interesting. But much more happened on the 20th of July. In 1976, the American Viking 1 lander successfully lands on Mars. <laughs> or <laughs> in a desert in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in 19... Yeah, I don't believe anything because I don't believe that anything landed on Mars. Uh, so, but you see that I don't have to believe it. it. It's enough when the majority believes it. You see? It is just a belief system. Do you believe the media? Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe your own common sense? It is just a question of belief. In 1977, the CIA releases documents under the Freedom of Information Act revealing it has engaged in mind control experiments. So therefore, I have to question that too. I know that I did Kennedy sessions just in a right uh, chronological kind of order, I hope, so that I that there is a possibility that uh, Jacqueline Kennedy and other people have been programmed with mind control. But the problem is that uh, is that really uh, true or is it just belief? So if the Central Intelligence Agency releases documents that they have engaged in mind control experiments, we do not know if they were successful or not. That's my problem with it. You see that I have to question everything and you can't prove one or the other. I just wanted to show you that there are some interesting things happening uh, because I think it's no coincidence that they landed on Mars the same day as they landed on the moon. What's your opinion about it? Mm. Yeah, that sounds probably what like what they're going to do. Yeah, I don't think on, on such coincidences. 1982, Hyde Park and Regents Park's bombing. The provisional IRA detonates two bombs in Hyde Park and Regents Park in central London, killing eight soldiers, wounding 47 people, makes another 11, and leading to the death of seven horses. Hmm, okay, could be a coincidence, but for me... 1969 and 1977, the successful lands on Mars on 20th of July is no coincidence. In 1999, we have another religious issue. The Chinese Communist Party begins a persecution campaign against the Falun Gong believers religious movement, arresting thousands nationwide. Interesting that they started on the July the 20th. Huh? Interesting. So, in 2021, the American businessman Jeff Bezos... You should know that guy. Flies to space aboard New Shepard. <clears throat> Who's the shepherd in the Bible? 
Hmm? NS-16 operated by his private space flight company Blue Origin. So, you got a third one of the 20th of July, which is connected to space. Now you got Jeff Bezos. We know who Jeff Bezos is, huh? I think everybody knows who Jeff Bezos is. If I remember correctly, he has one of the biggest companies around the Earth. Oh, yeah. You pointed out a Mason. A Mason, uh, no. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Amazon. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And he claimed, he claimed that on the 20th of uh, July, let's look it up. It must be here in this Wikipedia article. Uh, on July the 5th, he stepped down as the CEO and took over the role. Well, it would be later on in the article, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Going. Here. On July the 20th, 21, he launched on the NS-16 mission of the Jesuits with his half-brother Mark Bezos, Wally Funk and Oliver Damon, a Dutch space tourist. <laughs> and... He launched nine days after Richard Branson, that's the uh, founder of Virgin Records, uh, Mike Oldfield, etc., launched on board the Virgin Galactic Unit 22. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was on the 20th of July. Mm -hmm. NS-16 mission. Spaceflight mission. Yeah. New Shepard. Yeah. Come on. Junge, 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 Junge. What a world. So, <coughs> then you got some birth, which is not that interesting because uh, I don't think that most likely that is uh, some other guy to decide when somebody has been born. Although in the newer days and ages, uh, people want to play God and want to decide. So that's not that interesting. Uh... There are deaths on the 20th of July too. For example, 1903, Leo XIII, the Pope of the Catholic Church. But he was uh, 93. Could be a coincidence, maybe. It was on the 20th of July. Also, not a coincidence, maybe, because 1903 is quite close to the time where the Jesuits have been uh, restricted. Then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... In 1937, you have Giuclimo Marconi, the Italian physicist and engineer, Nobel Prize laureate. Can you imagine why I have mentioned him? Because Marconi is the famous so-called inventor. He was uh, very close to the time that uh, a certain Nikola Tesla also invented wireless uh, transmitting. So Marconi, there was a Marconi room on board of the... HMS Titanic, yeah, that was the room um, where they have made all this Morse codes and all this stuff. So he died also on the 20th of July, allegedly. And of course, in 1963, our American actor and martial artist Bruce Lee died at the age of 32 on the 20th of July. Mm -hmm. So, when I stumbled upon the fact that uh, William Casey, CIA Director 1981, said in a private meeting to somebody, and we have found out that it is a valid quote, he said, We know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. I have to add the fact that you know that the moon landing is false. And we have to believe that since the world has been controlled uh, much more earlier than World War II or World War I, um, we must assume that everything is just going according to a master plan or a script or an agenda. Also the landing on the Normandy and also the 20th of July, the assassination of uh, Adolf Hitler, which was not successful. So I think that All the things which have been happening on the 20th of July serve a certain religious purpose. It was in a case of the German Concordat in 1933 that the Church or the Vatican took over officially in Germany. Would you agree? Mm. You would agree. Okay. So, then, 11 years later, on the 20th of July 1944, with the assassination let's call it ritual, on Adolf Hitler 
it catapulted Adolf Hitler in, what shall we say, messiah-like state, so that he was uh, not wounded and he was under the protection of God. That's what the German media then were, was claiming, that he successfully survived the 1944 assassination attempt. You see that uh, he was putting out the propaganda that uh, he was one of God's chosen, yeah, because... Um, Yeah, he was bulletproof. Yeah, he was like a messiah, and he was been sold to the public as a messiah. Yeah, you can. Oh, who else was claiming that he's one of God's chosen recently in American history? Hmm? That rings a bell. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you know the one who admires uh, Mussolini. Mm -hmm. Publicly he says, "Oh, yeah, Mussolini was interesting." Mm -hmm. There was a campaign in Germany when Hitler flew from uh, event to event to hold speeches then in big uh, stadiums and uh, so forth um, that he came down from plane from the heaven and the quote was Hitler über Deutschland which means Hitler over Germany. Yeah, so he was yeah. coming from, from the top, he was coming from the gods, he was coming out of the sky. I, I know that is 100 years before. But it's the same thing that he's doing the Roman salute and he's just being sold as, uh, as unbeatable and unbreakable. And uh, Isn't it interesting, though, the way Mussolini gives the salute? It's almost vertical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the way uh, Hitler gives it, it's, it's, it's lower. Yeah, there was there was something that uh, the the average people in Germany claimed what that uh, symbol means. That means uh, the shit is that high in Germany. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I did not peep, peep, peep. But <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And really, yeah, really. That's that's, that's what wow. I've been told. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, but you see that the, these people are all indoctrinated. It's like in the Corona ritual. You see that uh, sure. give them give them a uh, give them a symbol like the Black Sun here or the yeah. the, the, the cross. Yeah, and uh, give them a quote. Uh, then everybody is just and and indoctrinate him in a school system that's most uh, valuable and uh, most important. And then they all go a court uh, like a big uh, army. And they are just mm -hmm. totally fascinating and they absolutely believe it because everybody believes it. Yeah, that's the problem with it. You see that uh, propaganda works in every way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to indoctrinate the children. Yeah. So uh -huh. when the World War was over, nobody wants to be affiliated with it. No, I wasn't there. So what do you see? Wafer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the German, um, not party, but it's the German government who signed the treaty with the Vatican. Yes. You see, if this there were. Is if after, that, it, the, after the signing? After this, of the yes, yes. But yeah. uh, if there were really um, a dictator on its own, he would never sign a treaty with the Vatican. Why? Why should Because you want to be over the Vatican. Yeah, it, it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Why should you? Why should he? Yeah. Right. Of course. Why yeah. compromise? Why compromise? Yeah. Hmm. That's really a something. It's it's. The Cathedral of Light was a main aesthetic feature of the Nazi Party rallies in Nuremberg from 1934 mm. to 1938, so quite obviously after the Vatican uh, concorded. Designed by architect Albert Speer, it consisted of 152 anti-aircraft searchlights at intervals of 12 meters. So that's it. It's just a procession for Lucifer, nothing else. Right, the light bearer, yeah. The light bearer, yeah. The false light of Lucy, huh? Mm. Yeah. The most dramatic moment of the Nazi party rallies was not a military parade or a political speech, but the Lichtdom or Cathedral of Light. 
Yeah, and then the were, people were convinced. You see, that is how, how to say it. It is just it, it. The lie is too big for the people to comprehend. That is just a lie and illusion. Yeah, it's like the moon landing. It's just too big. They see a extremely expensive rocket bursting mm -hmm. out from the ground, and it's absolutely believable. Yeah. And then you got right. an American president. Oh yeah, this is president. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? <laughs> and, and people and believe we that chose it's real. to go to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Oh yeah. And the speechwriter of Kennedy, one of them was, which was a Jesuit. Come on. So it's obvious. For me, it's obvious. I see nowadays. I see John F. Kennedy just as a Jesuitical president who served a role in being seen for the masses of audience, for the masses of the people, as a martyr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like uh, if uh, if Kennedy had survived, uh, then everything would be much a better place today. That's why Kennedy had a Jesuitic Bible and uh, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Do it anymore. Means. I don't believe it anymore. So, we know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. So, they believe that Pearl Harbor has been attacked by Japanese must be false. You see, Satan is the opponent. It's the opponent of Jesus Christ, which is the truth. So Satan is the liar. So everything that they do, they serve Satan. Of course, they have a Pentagon, which is a five-pointed uh, uh, building. Yeah, so I, I don't think it's that easy for one of us believers to uh, wrap their mind around a uh, blood sacrifice ritual that they're into yeah it's not that easy to wrap your brain around that no but when when the task is to pretend as if and so to lie to the public so then we can assume that Pearl Harbor was being done on purpose together mm -hmm. together with some other countries so can we assume that the Second World War has been planned before? I'm not talking about the letter of Mancini. I'm just talking about the stuff that they had to erect this nation state of Israel, for example, and United Nations. And the most uh, desperate times for all the people where they have the least power to oppose is in war, when they are just uh, on the verge of dying. So can we agree on the fact that uh, I think that everybody with a common sense agrees that the moon landing was fake. And so therefore that no state, no organization officially has ever accused the Americans of lying. Can we agree on the fact that they're all just in one boat of the Roman Catholic Church slash Jesuits. So that means that many, many other things happening there were faked. I think that the assassination attempt on Hitler of the 20th of July was also faked. I assume that the moon landing on the 20th of July 1969 was faked. I assume that the Bruce Lee uh, disease dying at the 20th of July 1973 has been faked. I believe that the assassination on Pope John Paul II in 1981 has been faked. I believe that the incidents in 2001 has been faked. I believe that the incidents worldwide starting on the 31st of December, the so-called holy day of the, of the Saint Sylvester, Pope Sylvester, the last day of the official year, according to the new Gregorian calendar, the outbreak of a worldwide disease has been faked. But why? Obviously. Obviously. But why on the why has that July the twentieth kind of significance? <sighs> and I looked at it from astrological standpoint. I looked at it from a numerical standpoint. I looked at it from the double or seven standpoint, and then it clicked. Nah, it, Michael, I don't think anyone's gonna get this. <laughs> I didn't get it. You didn't get it. Yeah, I, I will show it to you. Yeah, you only have to use a calendar here and you just uh, click on that link and you have the entire calendar for an entire year 
And therefore, for the just a purpose, as it is a little bit related of Bruce Lee, yeah, we just type in the year of uh, 1973, okay? So then we go to the calendar and we switch to the months of July, da, 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 and we go to the 20th, okay? So then we got the 20th of July. Yeah, so. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I, I succeeded here. So the same 20th thing. of July 1973 is day 201 of the year. And please remember that on this day it happened the German Concordat with the Vatican 1933. It happened the most likely fake assassination attempt of Adolf Hitler on the 20th of July 1944. It happened the fake moon landing on the 20th of July 1969. So it is the day 201 of the year, which is quite interesting because We are going to the Center for Health and Security.org, the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, the Center for Health Security. That is an event 201 based on a fictional scenario. The input experts used for modeling ah. the potential impacts were fictional. Michael, one question. Health for who? Mm -hmm. yep. They're not telling you. To protect you. and to serve the state. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. You see Health that and security for Rome. When I when I saw that the 20th of July is a day 201 Health of and security year. for the hierarchy only. Yeah, there you go. To protect the papacy. Yep. To sum it up. You see that it's a day 201 of the year and it's the same as event 201. But why is 201 so significant? There was a papal brief and not bull. They claim that it was not a papal bull. Dominic Ad Redemptor, Lord and Redeemer, is the papal brief promulgated on the 21st of July, 1773, by which Pope Clement XIV suppressed the Society of Jesus. The Society was restored in 1814 by Pius VII. Hmm. So, in 1773, these Jesuits were forbidden, yeah, suppressing the, the order, the complete order, and not only in Italy, but worldwide. So the Jesuits formerly had expelled from Brazil, Portugal, France, Spain, Parma. Yeah. And so in uh, 1773, shortly before the United States of America had been founded, <laughs> Yeah, so the Jesuits were suppressed and then happens this from a Jesuitical online bibliography BC EDU catalog La Construzione del Discorso della Soppressione nella Russia Jesuita and I was so kind to translate that article from that website here into English language. With the incorporation of White Russia into the Russian Empire following the first partition of Poland in 1772, a small part of the Society of Jesus came to exist within the Orthodox Empire of Catherine the Great. By the way, she was German. In total, 201 Jesuits in 18 residences. 18 is clear, huh? Six, six, six. When Pope Clement the 14th canonically suppressed the Society of Jesus in 1773 with the brief Dominic Ad Redemptor, the Tsarina, so the female Tsar, Catherine II, forbade the promulgation of the papal degree in her realm. As a result, the Society of Jesus remained legitimately in existence within the Russian Empire. So if you really believe that the Russians are the enemies of the Americans, then I can't help you. Because it was the Russian Empire who then protected at least 201 Jesuits in 18 residences in 1772 against a papal decree. The legitimacy of this survival derived principally from the non-promulgation of the brief of suppression, but not only it found support from a series of affirmative papal acts, which first tolerated, then approved, and finally approved officially and solemnly this survival with Pius VII's 1801 brief, Catholi K. Fide. In 1814, the same Pope restored the Society of Jesus in the entire world, which means that before that, at least between 1772 and 1814, 
So for that brief period amount of time, which are in total 42 years, interesting number, 42, yeah, with the papal bull Solicitudo Omnium Ecclesiarum, the act of restoring the society founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola, of course, was the result of determined action on the part of the Russian Jesuits themselves, who had Father Gabriel Gruber at their hand. Six years after the general restoration, the Tsar Alexander I signed the decree expelling the Jesuits from the empire. So, and now you make your mind up if... Uh, the 20th of July, which is the 201st day of the year, has resemblance to the Jesuits. And if then the Concordat of the German Reich in 33 has a connection to the Jesuits and the faked assassination attempt in 1944 on the 20th July has a resemblance to the Jesuits and the moon landing, the fake moon landing of 1969 has a resemblance to the Jesuits and the death, so-called death of Bruce Lee on the 20th of July 1973 has a resemblance to the Jesuit and the Viking lander on the Mars has a resemblance to the Jesuits or not. It's up to you. I know what I believe. And this, of course, is then my solution with it, which also convinces me that the death of Bruce Lee, it was just another nail in the coffin for the official theory, because I believe that the Jesuits are behind it and Bruce Lee is just a Jesuitical puppet. And why do, don't nobody or does nobody speak about this? Because our knowledge will be destroyed. There is a policy coming from Google, which I have been uh, translating into English. How is Google implementing the recent ruling of the Court of Justice of the European Union on the right to be forgotten? Well, in my humble opinion, it's quite easy. It's not the right to be forgotten. It is just the censorship that you don't have the knowledge anymore. It's just getting rid of real facts. The recent ruling by the Court of Justice of the European Union has far-reaching consequences for search engines in Europe. The Court established the right of certain individuals to demand that search engines such as Google remove results for searches containing their name. According to the ruling, the results displayed must be removed if they are not relevant to or no longer relevant for the purposes of the processing or if they go beyond these purposes. Then since the ruling on May the 13th, 2014, we have been working around the clock to implement it. Google says, this is not easy as we have to examine each request individually and balance the individual rights to protection of his or her personal data with the public's rights to access and disseminate this information. So, it is up to you what do you, what do you believe in the end. But I know what I believe in the end, that the Jesuits are pulling the strings since decades and century. And this is just a fulfilling of biblical prophecy. And therefore, I don't think that either the moon landing happened, nor the death of Bruce Lee naturally happened. And that uh, also everything else which happened on the 20th of uh, July has been connected to the Jesuits, because it's just 201. These are the Jesuits and also this would be a big, big alarm bell because it is Russia, which is one of the headquarters of the Jesuits. And this is not any good news. So thanks for listening to me and I hope that you will listen to my beloved brother in Christ, Brett. Wow, thanks, Michael, for that uh, that little extra portion of this whole Bruce Lee script coming into perfect focus now because, well, it doesn't really seem like, uh, you know, when you, when you look at, oh, yeah, event 201, so what? You know, they're just staging something there. Yeah, well... Depends on how you want to look at it, you know. Do you want to look at it the way everyone else in the world looks at it? Well, it's just it's just the news, you know, no big deal. It's just another version of the flu or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like this whole world has 
slowly but surely gone down the way of of this path where we're going to get further and further into a corner until there's nowhere else to go, Michael, and we will have to either take a mark or not. And you will not be able to buy or sell, save ye have the mark. And I think that's where it's headed, and they're just, you know, kind of using this as a way to, okay, how can we how can we narrow this down and, and get it right next time and, and um, you know, get people to uh, be uh, compliant with the strategy? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time, Michael. It just, it's, um, it's of course, never going to work according to the plan that they have because it says right in the Bible that... Uh, Iron and the clay don't mix. So spiritually speaking, uh, it's going to be a bloodbath. And that's certainly what we're looking for, isn't it? And that's what our, you know, our bodies are not, flesh is not looking forward to that day, but that day will come. And um, yeah. Yeah. The Bible predicts it, uh, but uh, our flesh does not want to deal with it. It's a little too much, I think. So, but you know, uh, one thing has to give for another to to uh, to come forward. So, we'll see. We will see, and a look at all of these things because they're not that fun to look at, are they? Just Bible fulfilling prophecy, and in the end, you see that they will succeed, but uh, <laughs> they don't yeah, believe right. that they have the price to pay, and they're just playing tricks on all numerology and all the stuff. But you see that the more you get into this, the more you get used to it, and then you see that nothing happens by incident. Uh, it was no accident with Mussolini, it was no accident with Hitler, it was no accident with the moon landing, it was no accident this and that. It's always the same and I'm just putting, uh, trying to put out the information till uh, it's been forgotten. Yeah? Yeah. So this is now rule in Europe and I would not be surprised if uh, soon this right. won't be yeah. any rule worldwide. Oh yeah. So that means that uh, all this information, which is in the in the eyes of the world teachers, is not uh, important, relevant. That uh, the younger the children are, the less they will get taught. The uh, the more distractions, the more lies, um, they will have to learn because they want to get good That's grades. That's the problem. They're putting their trust in the search engine, putting your trust in the internet, putting yeah. putting your trust in the most yeah. sophisticated tool known to man at the moment. Yeah. 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 So that's the future is just uh, mind control, but not with, with drugs actually, or not only with drugs injected by somebody, but uh, with their world teaching system, educational system, world core curriculum, whatever you would like to call it, ratio studiorum, yeah? Ratio studiorum. You see that you only get the things, or you only uh, learn the things uh, of doctrines, but you don't learn the truth. Well, yeah. In other words, you just learn perverted doctrine all day until you read the scriptures and learn otherwise. And that's all there is to it. They, you know? they were all deceived. You see, the Germans were deceived. The Americans are deceived. Everybody is deceived. On every scale, on every level, yeah. So well, that's the problem with politics. You put your trust in politics, then what do you get? Capricorn, that famous movie, Capricorn One or so. That's just a a movie, yeah, where they just uh, set up uh, this uh, hawks in a studio. Uh, Capricorn, of course, it's not only a zodiac sign, but Capricorn means the horn one, the goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. See if you mm. if you really believe that this is a moon landing, I'm 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 really sorry for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. 
but the people can can get it because it's just too big it's like in the case of kennedy it's just in the case of uh, COVID. it's just in any case you see that it's just so big and the entire world is just in line uh, like a big army and said we will destroy that uh, peep 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 yeah so in the end they will only have to claim that uh, christians have a certain peep 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 yeah and people will march against all the christians yeah, mm -hmm. because everybody sure. does it you see and it's popular and 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 all my, my my neighbor is doing it and my teacher is doing that and my boss is doing it and you see well it's like getting tattoos isn't it mm -hmm. yeah nobody getting asks piercings or whatever it's the same thing in the end it's like you know no big deal yeah right these people no are big totally deal deceived most. people are also totally deceived yeah, by the mass media and so that is the mass media the media for the masses and the masses are on the broadway leading to destruction the bible says so you only have to read the bible well also says in psalm chapter 2 why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing why it's simple it's so simple it's because they don't read their bibles they don't put their trust in God. They put their trust in man. Yeah. Second Thessalonians, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Yeah, and that's for it. this cause. Yes. For this cause. For what cause? Oh, let's start at the beginning. Uh, let, let me let me enhance it maybe a bit for everybody. I think that is uh, more. Ah, uh, let's let's go more beneficial here. We should read the whole chapter, chapter two, Second Thessalonians, because it would be really revealing. But anyway, we'll start at verse eight. And that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, yeah, because they received not the love of the truth, they won't listen to it. And for this cause shall God send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I love the second part. I no, just no, wanted to say that they receive not the love of the truth. You see, you can only receive yeah. the love of the truth if you believe in Jesus Christ. If yeah. you have the Holy Spirit, that's if correct. If you have the Holy Spirit, yeah. Yeah, and also this whole idea of, of baptism by water is a fallacy because there's baptism of the Spirit. No mm -hmm. one talks about that, you know, do they, in the mm -hmm. Baptist church? Oh, you have to be baptized. Well, you can be baptized in the Spirit, buddy. You know, that's the part the Baptists don't get. Or do they? Do they get it? Let's talk about it. You know, because there's a bunch of Freemasons in the Bas Baptist church. Mm -hmm. It's all about vain deceit, buddy. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the enemy's work has been done, and we're well, well into the very uh, nasty game of politics now with Palestine and 
so-called Israel. Something else these days, Michael. But here we are at the end of the session. We should wrap it up. Mm -hmm. I hope to see you next time, everyone. God bless and Maranatha. Mm -hmm.